Hi everyone, I'm here with Nicholas Crane, President of the Royal Geographical Society and also budding journalist, is that the right word? In a yep, way? I'm a journalist. Yeah. BBC Two Coast was on one of his main programmes. Hi, thank you very much Hi, for being to talk to us. And my first question to you is, um, you did your talk today on um, the landscape of Britain, what made Britain, why did you choose to do it on this topic? I wanted to uh, uh, create a new story, a new narrative for this island we know as Britain uh, that's framed by geography, not conventional history. And there is only one geographical uh, pair of bookends for this story. It starts when the ice melted, when there was nobody in Britain at all, mm -hmm. 10,000 years ago, and it runs forward through to the modern age now, 12,000 years later. So it's a 12,000 year story, it's a geographical story, and it's a new way of looking at Britain uh, through geographical eyes that avoid the conventional schisms that have arisen mm -hmm. through looking at Britain historically. Why do you feel we need this new narrative? I think it's very important right now to find a shared story for Britain. Mm -hmm. uh, there are 65 million of us living on this, this island. Uh, we, we're facing some interesting challenges in the future, climate change, population, uh, uh, food resources, uh, sea level rise, there's all sorts of geographical issues we need to confront. It would be less difficult to confront them if we're all working together mm -hmm. on the assumption that we're sharing a habitat, not competing in difficult, different, yes. different political entities. Because you mentioned um, 65 million people in the UK, yet you mentioned only 2% of it is urbanised. Yeah, only 2% only of Britain is, is, is built on. Um, uh, which is an astonishing statistic. Uh, but the, the, the slight snag is that 98% that isn't built on uh, technically green space is quite degraded, or very degraded, depending on how you look at it. So you know, it, it ranges from uh, you know, roundabouts on, uh, on uh, road intersections, motorway interchanges, through to degraded farmland mm -hmm. where soil nutrients have been leached out. So the green space we have is, is comprises nearly all of our landscape, but it's very degraded. Yeah, I can't see myself going for a family picnic on a roundabout. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, and what first inspired you to really get involved in geography? It goes back to school and uh, a wonderful geography teacher at Wyndham College mm -hmm. in Norfolk State School, uh, and his name was uh, Mr. Noble. Mm -hmm. I owe it to Mr. Noble, a wonderful geography teacher. I then went on, uh, I got just enough A-levels to do a geography degree um, and ever since then all of the work I've done, uh, mainly writing books but also journalism and mm -hmm. making television documentaries has been geographically related. So I, I, I guess I have a way of looking at the world geographically and seeing stories that I want to tell. <laughs> wow, fantastic. Um, would you say you're a physical geographer or like a human geographer? Which side would you... <laughs> I couldn't possibly <laughs> jump one way or the other. I, you know, I, I'm a split personality. Uh -huh. I, I'm an integrated geographer. <laughs> I see that they are both, uh, they are both mm -hmm. essential components in the way that we look at the modern world. Fantastic. What advice would you give to young geographers starting out today? Work hard, follow your passion, um, uh, use your own eyes every time you walk out of the house <laughs> because geography is everywhere and um, you don't have to be an intellectual you know, just to learn. You can learn on the way to the lecture hall, talking to people, looking, taking photographs, looking at the historical documents. Um, it's absolutely everywhere and um, it, you know, it, 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 it's, a, it's a subject for life. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I never stop being a geographer. I, I can't. You know, mm -hmm. I don't work and so then not work. Taking at all pictures geography. just at the footpath, for example, would be. Yeah, yeah. I mean, every, everything, everything. Where, 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 even sitting indoors, we're, we're, we're sitting in an element of geography. Mm -hmm. uh, this, this lecture hall is a, is a geographical construct. Um, you know, only twelve thousand years ago, this was tundra beneath our feet, and there were herds of reindeer wandering mm -hmm. past the weir. Um, so you can, you know, wherever you're sitting, uh, you know, historical geography is just one way of making it come alive, yeah. but. Uh, if, if you map the human interactions within the university here, you've, you've, you've got some uh, pretty amazing uh, human geographical flows to think about. Wow. How did you first become president of the Royal Geographical Society? Um, I, was, I, I was completely astonished to be invited to put my mm -hmm. name forward for election. Uh, it's an elected post, it's three years, and um, there's nothing I'd rather be doing. Uh, 
it is the Royal Geographical Society is the most important learned society mm -hmm. for geographers in the world. Uh, it's doing an immense amount of good in terms of pushing for more geography be to be taught in schools and universities. Mm -hmm. It's raising the quality of geographical teaching. And it's also forging links with geographical practitioners in the working world. Um, as we know, you only have to look at any yeah. day at any news feed and you're going to see huge geographical issues, pressing geographical yeah. issues. We need more geographers. The RGS, the Royal Geographical Society, is at the centre of creating a new generation of working geographers. Mm -hmm. what, what, what's your average day involved? With the well, well, I'm, I'm a juggling. While, while I'm president, I'm juggling. So, uh, you know, I, I've got my, my work, which is writing books uh, mainly, but also making television films and, uh, and writing journalism. But uh, at the RG, I'm at the Royal Geographical Society every Monday night uh, introducing speakers. So last night I was on the stage uh, introducing Rory Stewart, who's the mm -hmm. Minister of State um, for DFID in the government. And um, he was talking about... Uh, uh, the uh, the borderlands between England and Scotland and about the human uh, geographies of this, this transition zone between Scotland and England where he lives mm -hmm. and where he's an MP as well. Uh, so every Monday night I'm on the stage at the RGS. There are a lot of meetings, committee meetings and so on to attend. I'm, I'm chair of the mm -hmm. trustees, a lot of responsibility involved with that. And I do a fair bit of public speaking uh, for the RGS. <laughs> and um, and I, I love it all. I'm oh very God. lucky. It sounds brilliant. Um, you described yourself as, at the beginning of the talk, you said, I'm not an academic. Do you, do you need to be an academic to be president of the Royal Geographical Society? No, you don't. Um, but, um, you know, like, I, like a lot of non-academics, there's a part of me that wants to be one. Mm -hmm. and, uh, <laughs> and I would have, I, I'd have, I, I know I'd have enjoyed mm -hmm. it. And um, so there's a, you know, it's, it's, it's that, that, you know, I, yeah. I see as a slightly unrealised <laughs> Uh, dream, but I, I've, I've spent most of my life reading books and papers, so mm -hmm. um, uh, I, 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 may, I try and make up for it in an <laughs> amateurish way. Brilliant. And finally, my final question is, with Brexit obviously coming forward, sorry, the, the, the name drop as it were, um, how's that going to affect the Royal Geographical Society? Well, um, in it, your opinion, it's a, it's a source of concern, if only that uh, the, uh, the research funding, for example, uh, mm -hmm. is, is, is a matter of concern within universities, and, and the RGS is, is intimately involved mm -hmm. in, in field work and research in universities, supporting it through grants and so on. So, you know, we are we are concerned about where future funding is going to come from for mm -hmm. universities and for and for obviously exchange. Um, Do you uh, think the government will make the money available? So you're asking the wrong person. Wrong. Um, <laughs> you'll need you'll need to ask another geographer, Theresa May, uh, <laughs> who's a geographer. She might be able to tell you. <laughs> okay, brilliant. Well, thank you very much for your time. It was really really awesome to meet you. Thank you so much. Thanks, Luke. <laughs>